Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Apostle Hermes Eugene of Higher Life Commission here in Johannesburg, South Africa. Um, by the grace of God, that is something that has always been in my mind, and I felt like we should give it a, a shot today. The question is this, why do God always insist on covenants? Why? Now, let's take our step down to the beginning, uh, the first covenant we saw that God wrote with men, and um, that is in Genesis chapter 1, ranging from verse 28 down. And we realize that um, all of a sudden, God began to uh, permit Adam and the wife, he said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. And, and that didn't end there. We saw the Noahic covenant as well. How that after the destruction of the earth with water, and God came through the sign of a rainbow and established covenant with Noah. And we, we looked at it as it's actually boiling as to boil into Abrahamic covenant, you know, and happens to be the covenant of circumcision. And we saw that took place as well. We saw different kinds of covenant. We saw the Davidic covenant. We saw the Mosaic covenant before the before you have the Davidic covenant. We saw, and now all of a sudden we have the New Testament covenant, which is actually the covenant that actually brought about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The question is, why is God in different dispensations or era always, always rely on covenant to actually walk or operate? It's something that we need to look into. Now, I think the answer is actually found in all of these covenants. We're going to look at the implications and we're going to relate them to this dispensation that we actually found ourselves. Let's start from that Adamic covenant or the Edenic covenant. This is a creator, a maker, a loving father who designed a unique species in his own image after his likeness, packaged a good garden, prepared a bank site to the garden. I call that the Bank of uh, Eden, the island of Havila, loaded with gold. We saw a beautiful place, a pleasurable place, and the Bible says that he brought man into Eden, the, the, the garden of Eden to be precise, a particular spot. And the Bible made us to understand that he comes down in the coolness of the evening just to fellowship with Adam. Wonderful. Could that be his primary motive of actually creating a species or a being that looks like him, that can relate with him on the same on the same standard because he made him in his own image after his likeness? A condition that even the angels do not even have the right to enjoy. A condition that even the elders in the heavens do not even have the prerogative to enjoy. Now, we look at there, and Adam sinned against God. One was expecting that by virtue of the sins of Adam, Adam would complete, be completely banished from Ephraim. Yet, when God was dishing out punishment upon this creature, God actually marked out a way, a rescue way through his words. He said, the seed, singular, of a woman shall crush the head of the serpent. Awesome. And it tells me that when God was speaking or was saying those words, God was not looking at Cain and Abel. He wasn't looking at them. He was looking at a sea. And if you run down to Abrahamic covenant and you begin to look at, he said to Abraham that your seed shall take charge, shall inherit it, shall possess the earth. And now we look at it from that angle again. Why would God be using the word seed when Ishmael was in view? Why would God be using the word seed when Isaac was in view? So God was not looking at just Isaac. God was not looking at Ishmael. God was looking at a being. If you narrow it down and you get to the Mosaic uh, covenant, the covenant of the law, and we realize that it looks like everything that was being done in that law era was a pointer to someone else. Do we want to proceed again? Let's look at the Davidic covenant. How that he told David that his loins will remain kings. Someone along the line in the scripture is called the son of David. And I begin to follow this pattern. And I realize that when Christ came and he said that he came to fulfill the laws and the prophets. And now we now realize that the seed that God kept on mentioning every time he provoked a covenant with man is actually pointing to Jesus. He is the very seed. He is the very seed that the law is speaking about. 
He is the very seed that the Abrahamic covenant is talking about. He is the very seed that the covenant with David in view of his loins being kings forever is talking about. Jesus, thou son of David. Hallelujah. The question is, let's go back to the first question. Why is God actually packaging covenants? And I've come, I've come to realize that God placed covenant in view because he is a faithful God. So when God wants to function, he looks out for his covenant and he operates on the basis of his covenants. He doesn't want to operate outside the confines of his covenants. And I looked at it again and I realized that when God enacted a covenant with Abraham and he had to circumcise the first skin of a man, that was the only time I saw in view of all of this covenant that we just spoke about that God had to engage with man so as to establish in covenant. The rest of it was God speaking, doing, erecting, enacting a covenant with man, but not really man getting involved. It was only in the Abrahamic covenant that the first skin of a man was actually taken out and man had to bleed. Now, that took me down to the covenant that Christ had, or God had in Christ. The covenant of redemption and reconciliation. The covenant of salvation. How that God became man so as to fully establish his covenant. Remember that in the Mosaic covenant, that the substitute there was actually an animal. We always remember that in certain situations that the high priest will enter the Holy of Holies and actually use either lamb or whatever it is that is not actually man and spill it as a means of covering of the sins of man. The Bible says that we have a high, a better, a, a high priest, a better high priest, and that is Jesus Christ. So I realized that all of these covenants are actually pointing to the seed. And that seed is actually Jesus Christ. Praise God. It means that in this dispensation, why God is actually establishing covenant is that he wants to operate within the confines of the covenant that he established. So, in this dispensation, no wonder when Jesus speaks, he said, I do not speak words of my own. I say whatever I hear the Father say. That is so awesome. And now, now that we all, that our new creations are now founded in Christ. Now, look at what happens to us. Christ came and took his residence in the new creation so as to speak in through us, so as to guide in us, so as to teach in us, bring into our remembrance the things that we ought to know. This is so powerful. And he does that through his spirit. Now in this dispensation, just like in the era of the law, that man was unable to keep to the dictates of the covenant. In this dispensation, no man can actually cajole you or teach you what to say again. Because right now, he has imprinted the very thing that was once in the tablet of stones. Uh, they have been imprinted in our hearts. And now we know him. So we're saying to Jesus, show us the Father. He said, you've been with me and you've not seen the Father. He said, you've seen me. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. For I and the Father are one. So now, the new creation right now is no, no, no longer under the law obligation as to trying to live by the dictates of the law. He is trying to live by faith in Christ who happens to be the full representation, the express representation of not only the, 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 the deity of the Father, but the works of the Father, the will of the Father, the heartbeat of the Father, the thoughts of the Father, and the words of the Father. Hallelujah. No wonder that in view of the new creation realities, we are no longer leveraging or under any punishment anymore as long as we remain in Christ. As long as we have faith and our trust and our dependability in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. There is therefore now no condemnation to this one that is in Christ. This one that is in Christ, he's no, no, longer, no, no longer under any condemnation at all. 
As long as he remains in Christ, as long as he allows Christ to express the fullness of the Father through him as a vessel, he is now the living address of the Father. He is the residence of the Father. The Father speaks through him. The Father operates through him. The Father talks through him. The Father walks through him. He is an annexure of the kingdom. He is the extension of divinity here on earth. Because the primary essence, I believe, that actually enables God or makes God always want to run covenant with man is that he wants to work within the confines of his covenant. So when he finds a man that comes into him and allows that man and the man allows God to dwell in him, God now enjoys the leverage to express his will, his heartbeat through that same vessel. God is looking for vessel that he can actually use to express his will, his heartbeat, his thoughts and his plans. You can be the one. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible said now we are the ambassadors of Christ. It means that, that when we talk, that Christ is the one talking. Just like Christ told us that he never spoke words of his own. He speaks as he hears the Father speaks. Oh, wonderful. This is heart touching. And this is mind blowing. The beautiful thing about the reality of this new covenant that God wrought in Christ through his burial and his resurrection because, because he became the sacrificial lamb. The beautiful thing about it is that when a new creation found himself in Christ, praise God, he becomes a savior to any catchment area that he found himself. He, became, he becomes means of redemption in any given catchment area that defines himself. So if you are in your workplace, say you are in the banking world, at that particular place, you are actually an expression, an extension of the heartbeat of the Father, the will of the Father, the mindset of the Father, and the very words of the Father. This is awesome. This is awesome. No wonder it is called the living covenant. It's the living covenant. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I want to encourage you right now, if you are a believer, that you need to understand this and begin to pray in this dimension. God has actually brought you up to an office. It is a higher calling whereby every faculty in you, every organ of your being, every system in you will become an extension and an expression of the mind of the Father, the heartbeat of the Father, and the will of the Father. Praise the Lord. Somebody said, if Jesus was on earth today, I tell you the truth. You are the Jesus that the, your world needs to see. Somebody saying, if God is, is here today, listen to me. You do not need to say that. Because by virtue of your, your redemption in Christ, he brought you out of darkness and brought you into the kingdom of his dear son. By virtue of you becoming a citizen of the kingdom, it is a direct uh, certification that any place you are, it should be that Christ is there speaking through you, writing his works and the will of the Father through you. He said, I must work the work of him that sent me while it is day. For night cometh when no man shall walk. They brought food to him. He said, my food and my meat is to do this work and to finish it. Awesome God. Thank you, Father. I am looking forward to those days or that day when every believer in Christ will understand the, the, the essence of God rotten covenant, more especially this end time covenant, this new covenant. Remember that all of these covenants are all pointing to this end time covenant, the last covenant, the new and everlasting covenant. There will be no other covenant under this. This covenant speaks, it speaks through you. He said, the Bible said that he speaks better things. God is anticipating and looking forward to vessels whom he can use in this end time to push forward his will in his heartbeat. And you can be the one. 
He's, I'm looking for a man. God, they see, in the realm of the spirit, vacancy still exists. If you are looking for deployment, come into the business of God. There is a CEO that is still looking for laborers. He said the work is many, but the laborers are few. You can avail yourself and become the next deployed employee of his kingdom. Whereby he can express his heartbeat, his mind, and his will. Hallelujah. And if you're not yet born again, with this few captions, I'm going to extend a hand of fellowship to you. And as the Spirit convicts you, that you decide, make a quality decision, and subjugate, submit, and submerge your totality to Jesus Christ. So that you can function within the ambits of this new covenant and allow God to express His mind through you. Thank you very much. And if you're there, you're not yet born again, can you just say this few words with me? Say, Lord Jesus, I heard your word, and I heard that you are deploying employee, and I'm here for you. I believe in your lordship. I believe you died, and you were buried, and you resurrected on my behalf. When you died, I died. When you were buried, I was buried. And when you resurrected, I found new life in you. From today, you are my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus Christ. I am born again by faith. If you've said that, I adjure you that wherever you are, look for a Bible-believing church and begin to attend. And if you do that, please ensure that you walk within the second friends of believers. Fellowship with the people of like mind. The same bears of the same feather flock together. Look for people of the same mind and fellowship with them. Study the scripture all the time. Pray all the time. And I trust you as you grow in this race, God will spot you out and begin to use you as an available vessel. Remember, he said, Behold, I knock at the door of your heart in the book of Revelation. He said, If any man should open, I will come in and dine with him. Let God dine with you. Enjoy a roundtable meeting with him on a daily basis, just as it was in Eden. Until we meet again, keep enjoying a higher life in Christ. My name is Tulumen, Apostle Hamas Eugene. God bless you.